everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the Blario 11 by Wings42. This is a payware plane and I believe it's the first vintage plane for Microsoft Flight Sim. At least it's the first one that's payware. And by vintage I mean not in service anymore, not in any sort of regular service or uh, for sale. Uh, normally, uh, otherwise all the rest of these planes are for sale or in service in some way. Uh, all the ones that come with Microsoft Flight Sim and as far as I know all the other payware ones. So uh, this is, I mean this plane was the first plane that flew across the English Channel. This is from 1911-ish I think, somewhere around there. So it is old, it is very old. And you can see the speed, cruise speed 32 knots. And that's if you're lucky. <laughs> Max altitude 2,000 feet, if you're lucky. Uh, so they have three versions here, the Anzani, Anzani Rip Edition, uh, Rest in Peace Edition, and the Gnome Omega. I believe this refers to the engine that was fitted. So it's a Gnome powered one in this case. It is a 50 horsepower rotary engine, uh, which was much better. The Anzani was an uh, older three-cylinder one that produced half the power of the Gnome. And then this RIP edition is the most realistic flight model one. And it has more limited rudder control than the other two. So I'm going to go in order of easiness. The Gnome is the easier one than the Anzani and then the Anzani RIP edition. In the manual they have one uh, skull and crossbones for the Gnome, two for the Anzani, and three for the RIP edition. So, yeah. I like that the plane I'm going to fly is rated by skull and crossbones. <laughs> That's That seems right. Anyway, uh, so we're going to fly around at London because once I get the hang of it, I would like to do the channel crossing and perhaps even explore some... French cities, some freeware French scenery with the plane, uh, but we'll have to cross into France to do that. So anyway, first the Gnome Omega, we have a whole bunch of liveries actually, so it doesn't stop just with uh, the variants. We've got uh, Italian uh, 13 Squadriglia, so that there's a Swiss one, so Quand Mem. Well, I guess we can do that for the memes. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, let's go with that one. All right. And we'll pump up the fuel to max to see how that handles uh, as far as getting off the ground. It seems to have a huge range. Of course, it's not very fast. And we're taking off from London City Airport, so we'll do some sightseeing at London with each of these. So, here we go. It says that Louis Blerio uh, sold his headlight company. He had a headlight company to fund his uh, aviation company. The first international flight. Oh, that's true. Yeah, flying over the English Channel. That will get you from one country to another, isn't it? Oh, that's a sound. Oh, I'm moving. Well, it's a little bit laggy because of the London scenery, I'm sure. We'll have to wait a little bit for things to catch up. Oh, encoding overloaded, it said. Okay, it should be better now. Let's see this from outside. Fairly simple. Sure wants to go. Alright, but let me get back inside. Let's have it pro be proper. Um, there's no instruments to speak of, so... Let's see how it goes. Throttling up. Doesn't seem to be making a different sound as I throttle up. Uh, it's handling different- oh, I'm off the ground. Okay. I don't think there's elevator trim. <laughs> no, I immediately went to trim, but I don't need to do that, I don't think. Let's see. Uh oh, oh, uh, handling it like this view is a little bit hard, actually. I wanted to see it twisting the wing if possible, which is how it actually controls the plane by twisting the wing. I wonder if we could see that. There's some visual effect, but I'm not sure. 
I don't know if it'll blow something if I push the engine too hard. I wish it would. <laughs> I'm like that. Uh, okay. There's some slight visual change to the wing, but not really anything huge. But this is the 50 horsepower version. It's gonna take some patience to do something useful with this, but it could be good for sightseeing. I mean, it is good for sightseeing. Heck, you can look right through the, bo the body of it. I mean, that's good sightseeing right there. Can't beat that. Down here, too. I don't know. Uh, it says trim there, though. Yeah, I guess there is elevator trim, which seems wrong. I don't think there ought to be elevator trim, but it's got a trim option. I'm not sure. Oh, there's another plane taking off. I suppose you could trim the plane by, like, adjusting the wires somehow. There is sort of a gauge up there, suspended in front of me. But I don't know what it's supposed to be trying to read. <laughs> Considering, oh, it broke. I caused critical damage. I went over speed. But that little gauge doesn't seem to be doing anything useful. Anyway, that was too easy. <laughs> that was too easy. It lulled me into a false sense of security. Anyway, if I'm going over speed, then clearly I need a weaker engine. So let's try uh, the Anzani. Not the Rip Edition yet. We'll work our way. It sounds different. Oh, oh, oh. Oh no, it died. I start the engine by fully, uh, firmly pulling the propeller, okay? Um. Okay. Got it going again. Wonder if I can pull the propeller in flight. I didn't pick a livery this time. It's got a sort of tank in the bat and the tail there. This is not the R.I.P. edition. Got this big frame in front. It's taking a while to pick up speed too. But maybe it doesn't even need to get to the green part before pick taking off. I don't know. Whoa, whoa, I'm skidding. I'm skidding. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Ah, ah, okay. Uh. Maybe I should have paid more attention to the wind direction. Uh-oh, water. I'm, I'm sort of stuck skidding to the left. Oh, okay. Um, let's try again. It says it was f flown for the first time in 1909, not 1911. First aircraft to implement the joystick arrangement, so there's that. Wind is 10 knots. Hmm. Can I get a wind direction? Uh, where's the sock? At 10 knots, it would be pushing me in a very definite direction, wouldn't it? Whoa. That guy's just bouncing all over the place. Um, I only have 50% fuel, too. Okay, uh, well, wind socks. So, wind is pushing like this. Maybe a little bit to the left. So... That's probably not the best for takeoff. Come on, baby. Well, we're in the green zone. Uh-oh, I'm skidding, though. Please. Take off. Yes! Okay, we're, we're off the... Well, no, we're going down again. Okay. Uh... No, oh no. Oh gosh. This is not going well. Okay, stop, 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 stop.
breaks. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think we've discovered the ways to hurt this plane. <laughs> Mainly on takeoff and probably on landing too. I'm gonna try an in cockpit takeoff this time. We're missing that little instrument that was suspended in front on the Gnome Edition. Three cylinders. I guess providing 25 horsepower. No, it's leaning again. It does the same thing. Oh. I'm trying to build up speed here. Okay. Uh. And I'm not going to pull up very much because it doesn't have a lot of speed to work with. The Gnome Edition was def- oh, I'm back down. Oh god. I'm back down in a bad way. Oh no. That wasn't even Wright Brothers length. Can we straighten up here? I don't suppose we could taxi. Oh no, I'm going into water. Uh, let me try and put brakes on. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Oh. Hmm. Boy, th this one's hard. So, its stall speed is 19 knots. Its takeoff speed is 22 knots. Its cruise speed is 32 knots. Its climb rate is 100 feet per minute. I'll take, I'll take it from outside this time. I need to figure out which way the wind is going so that I can keep going in that direction. Oh no. Uh, here we go again. I need floats. Okay, so I'm going to try and take off in the opposite direction now. It says 10 knots 264. We're on runway 27 now. And the good thing is, uh, this is the direction of the city. The city's in front of us, so... Good. This is where I'd like to go. Alright, that was much easier. So definitely do not try and take off against the wind in this. Even a tiny wind. Wow, that airspeed fluctuate. Oh god. Yeah, stalling is going to be real easy with just a gust or something. A lot of that airspeed difference is because of gusts, I think. No, I want to go this way. Oh, the ease with which I took off this time is uh, deceptive, I think. Oh... Oh god. Help me win. No. Oh god, I'm putting push sideways. No, I can't even cross the Thames. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god, cross the English Channel. <laughs> oh god, I'm not in any controlled sort of state here. Oh god. Oh. Oh. I'm up again. <laughs> uh, got, yeah, I'm, I'm. Oh, I'm in the water. Uh, well, it was better. Thirty. Okay. Just. Okay. No, you're not fooling me. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm being blown sideways half the time. Oh, sorry little pipe stroll. Oh no, <laughs> not again. Uh, oh, ah. Maybe I should launch off of like a cliff. <laughs> At least I'd have some altitude to start off with.
Okay. Uh, basically, I think this version has less rudder control. Old Rhinebeck, La Manche. Both interesting names. I'll go with La Manche. Maybe I should try it lighter. I don't know what station 2 is. I don't need 200 pounds. It's over max takeoff weight. Wait a minute, was the other thing also over max takeoff weight? Mm, two pounds, yes. Maybe that's what it was. Hold on. Aircraft selection. This one. Was this default over? Its default is over max takeoff weight. I don't know what this 210 pounds is, but I don't need it. Um, and the center of mass is probably better like this. I. I am 150 odd pounds, so I'll accept that. Um, I'll have 10 pounds of luggage, it's okay. Alright, uh, okay, let's try the non-RIP edition one one more time without it being overloaded. So maybe we're not over our max takeoff weight this time, and that will help. Well, we're taking off. Pretty decisively, too. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting some... Uh, we're still leaning to one side a bit. And we're not going fast at all. Oh, no, I don't know. It might not be great. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. Ah! Okay, maybe it wasn't the mess. <laughs> Let's try the RIP edition. I'll just go straight for that. Maybe I should split my mass into two parts. <laughs> uh, it seems to want to do that. Make them both sort of even. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I want to verify my mass. Okay. Yes, it's, it's correct. Do not reset. Okay, this is our IP edition. Let's see, I'm at full throttle. I'm fairly light. I'm off the ground. But in this direction, that has not been the problem. <laughs> the problem has been staying off the ground. Uh, no, I don't want to go too up too fast. And also, it always wants to go left here, and maybe I can reduce throttle and try and get myself right, but it's tough. Uh, I'm, I'm using full right aileron-ish uh, my, on my joystick, going full right on it. Um, I throttle down a bit. Being lighter helps, that's for sure. Uh, I'm still being pushed left mightily. Well, might as well go to the left of this building. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to be pushed left here. We're going to go in a big leftward circle. <laughs> uh, my, my joystick is full right roll right now. So. Oh, well, now I'm turning right. Sometimes it'll go right. <laughs> Apparently, sometimes it'll go right. Oh, there seems to be an issue in the Thames right there. Okay, it seems to be going right more. Now, I'll try and stop going right so much.
Wow, well, the RIP edition is actually easier than the non-RIP. Well, I think it was the mass. I think it was the weight. And the distribution of my own weight apparently needs to be in the two stations, I guess. And not just in the one that says pilot. All right, well... Let's see if we can make it to Heathrow. This seems like maybe too much of an adventure, but it's, uh, it's going to be a long ways. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be a short ways to Heathrow at this speed. I mean, I'd say it's a good sightseeing plane because it's slow. But boy, do you have to pay a lot of attention to it. And I don't dare go in the cockpit view. I mean, I don't have more instruments there. The airspeed indicator is super important, as is the vertical speed indicator. But eventually, once I get the hang of it, I suppose, we'll be doing that more. Seeing if I can handle it without the information. 100 feet per minute, folks. That's what it's supposed to climb at. I'm not going in the midst of the banking center or anything. That seems dangerous. Not with me not entirely knowing how straight I can keep this. Unless that structure that looks like the skeleton of the Colosseum. It's a sort of cylindrical skeleton kind of thing to our right. But they're gonna build something there. I don't know what that is. Not that I know much about the uh, buildings in London anyway. But once you have altitude, it's a lot happier. I guess I can go in the cockpit now. So this is the view from the cockpit. I hope it was a reliable engine. Again, not bad on the sightseeing. The thing is, I'm worried about accidentally dipping low and going over speed like this. You can see we're in the yellow zone. And let me look up what the max speed on this was. It says 37 knots. 37 knots was max speed. So, we occasionally pass that. I don't know what when the sim is going to break it. Max speed on the GNOME version was 49. And we broke it. We definitely went past its max speed and caused the sim to tell me I had overstressed the vehicle. So, we know it's possible in here with these planes. I mean, I don't know to what extent it would really be overstressed if it went past 37 knots in real life or whether that was just it couldn't sustain more than 37 knots and it wasn't something to do with the structure of the vehicle. Would it really rip itself apart if it was made to go faster than that for a lengthy period of time or did it just not have the ability to go past that number for a lengthy period of time. The two different things. Which is a longer flight? Going from London City Airport to Heathrow or going across the channel from Dover to Calais? I don't actually know. This might be fairly long actually. On the bright side there's no problem with frame rates when your plane is going this slow. But I'm sort of shocked by the low volume of vehicle. Oh gosh, I'm going down too much. Yeah, I wish there were more vehicles. Still haven't seen a train in this game. Thought there were supposed to be trains. There are trains in X-Men 11. There were trains in FSX, if I recall correctly. Hmm, that tower bridge does not look like you can fly through 
through it between the towers and under the top deck, does it? No, it does not look like that. No, how's the Tower of London looking? Looking rather spiffy and shiny. Like they cleaned up the place, kind of thing. Okay, let's not fly into the shard, please. Stay away. Control is a little bit better now. Especially once we've got speed. Lots of bridges that don't look horrible. This game has not been good to bridges to a large degree. But uh, again, I have the add-on scenery from the marketplace, so... We're not halfway there yet. <laughs> That's great. Well, London Eye, Houses of Parliament, Pink Ben. Whoa, too fast. Dude. That's gonna be way too fast. It doesn't kill me at 37 knots at least. I don't know how far I can push it though. Okay, so I just looked up the distance between London City Airport and Heathrow and it says 24.6 miles. That's not nautical miles, that's miles miles. So... Fine, how about the English Channel? Minimum distance. No, not the width. It says, uh, the Strait of Dover, 21 miles. So, the flight I'm making from London City Airport to Heathrow is actually longer than the flight across the English Channel. Now, I started with 29% fuel. And I was under the impression it had a 55 nautical mile- No, that's nautical mile range. So I wonder how this is going to go. We're not quite halfway there, but we've used much less than half of our fuel. I'm going to try and go at 40 knots here. More consistently and see. I can see Heathrow over there, I think. Okay, definitely halfway now, I think. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. I would guess about 15 minutes away at this point. If I keep up 40 knots. I'm gonna have to get a feel for flying this without seeing the instruments and that's gonna be the trick. Clearly, if uh, you happen to eventually get this plane, you might want to double check those weight and balances bits. Just in case they're not quite right. And we're so close to Heathrow now, I can feel it! <laughs> Honestly, I think uh, they underestimated the range of this in the menu. Then again, the menu isn't particularly definitive about the, any of the numbers. It's best not... Oh, it's really sticky suddenly. I don't know what it's, it's loading something. I guess it's loading Heathrow stuff. But it's weird for it to be so sticky when I'm flying at less than 40 knots. <laughs> Seems wrong. But... Yeah... The aircraft selection menu is often not good in terms of numbers. I wonder to what extent the balance of everything changes as the fuel gets consumed. It's not that much of a weight, I don't think. Okay, we've been going pretty decisively for 27 right for a while now. The 
Pappy lights look all red, which is sort of not surprising. <laughs> sort of not surprising. I don't know if the trim does anything. It's curious. Look at this road to our right, practically no one on it. I, I think I, I don't even see a car. Very disappointed. Why am I even going slow if I don't see traffic? Well, this, there was a car I was seeing, but not for very long. It's like on a little stretch only. Okay, there. Okay, we see some cars now. I think it heard me complaining. Are they driving on the correct British side or not? Yeah, I guess they are. No, they're just going driving wherever. <laughs> they seem to be going eastward in on both sides of that. Well, I have attempted to descend a bit. My sense of control of the plane has been good, but that's at 40 knots. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to take it from the cockpit somehow. Let me get a sense of where on my throttle is the lowest part of the green zone there. Looks like 50%. Okay. No, oh, it's definitely handling worse right now. How fast are we going? We're right on the edge, really. I can hear the sound of the wings warping, I think. And the controls going like the rudder and all. Gotta trust that if I go below the green zone on the RPM, the engine will quit on me. Like the way it does when we have to start it by hand. So I'm not going below 50% on the throttle. I don't know what speed we're going at. Or whether we're close to stalling or not. Oh, whether it is a plane coming right at me, it probably is. I think that's one. I'm not just sitting there. Come on, plane, get out of the way. You're a big bad airliner. Move. Why would you be taking up the runway like that? Come on. Alright, well, we're gonna have to go over this airliner. Oh. Well, I don't know what speed I'm at, but I'm gonna have to make a landing here. Okay, throttle down. And I'll try and clear the runway. Uh, try. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Come on. Oh, I didn't quite make it. But I landed. Oh, it showed me a logbook. Does it, it does that now? I should log this. This is a log worthy flight. Um, it doesn't log all my time, I swear. But uh, 41 minutes from London City Airport to Heathrow. 
and that would be more than the distance across the channel according to Google. So there we have it, the Blerio 11 and yeah, I am actually surprised I made it. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.